Hi, my name is Tracy Collette. I'm a swim teacher and coach in the Atlanta area with 30 plus years experience. I've worked with the Wounded Warriors for eight years. I've worked with all of the branches, uh, 40 or so swim camps and clinics, became SOCOM's head coach six years ago, done six Warrior Games with them, and twice was asked to be a Team USA coach for the Invictus Games. I also work with our intellectually impaired athletes, those with IQs of 74 or lower on the autism spectrum or that have Down syndrome. And through that work, was also asked to coach Team USA at their world championships, which are called the INAS Global Games. Grew up swimming, loved it, swam in high school, and then swam for the University of Georgia, go dogs. And I've actually competed in master swimming a few times, garnering a few state records, couple national titles at YMCA Nationals, and I have a couple top 10 medals from world championships. So that's my background in history. This first video is an introduction to swimming. I'm gonna go over some of the equipment you can use, the pool setup for competitive purposes, and some of the basic principles of swimming in general, and tell you about the four strokes, and also get a little into the events and what's going on at Warrior Games. First of all, I would like to say a few things about the Military Adaptive Sports Program. I have seen this program change lives, and I know on a couple of occasions it's actually saved lives. I'm a very big proponent of it. I think it's a great thing to help our wounded warriors with their transitions into their new lives. So I highly encourage everyone to try it. Come to a camp or clinic. Try a bunch of different sports and see what you like. You never know, you may end up being some really good at something you've never even tried before. I also wanna say that the Warrior Games are a baseline. This should be a stepping stone. If you wanna take some of the skills you've learned, some of the new sports you've tried and go home and use those as maybe your outlet for some energy or to help you with your physical health or to be able to do a zen moment if you're really concentrating on say shooting at a target uh, we wanted you to take this and use it for yourself so if you are at a camp or clinic you don't necessarily have to compete in a sport in order to go try it for instance if you are at one of my cancer clinics and you want to come out to the pool because you'd like to be able to exercise and you keep losing your breath come out i will help you learn how to do that if you just want to learn how to do a flip turn, I can help you do that. If you do want to compete, I can help you do that too. We'll train you up and get you ready to go. Along those same lines too, don't be scared to try a sport. Even if you have balance issues and you're, you're scared of riding on a bicycle, you can do a recumbent bicycle. And in swimming, you do not have to do flip turns. If you get dizzy or have vertigo, um, you don't have to jump off the starting blocks to start. These are adaptive sports, so we're not really concerned about what you can't do. We're here to try to help you figure out what you can do. The coaches are here to adapt the sports to you. So go ahead and try it and we'll figure it out. And sometimes we have to figure it out together, but that's the joy and the, and the beauty of it. We're all learning when we do these things. So let's get started with the swimming. Swimming has four strokes. There's freestyle, Technically, most people are doing the Australian crawl, which is what you'll normally see people do because that's the fastest way to get down the pool. Um, but freestyle means anything goes. You don't have to do the Australian crawl. You don't even have to stay on your front. You can do anything down the pool as long as you start at the starting end and finish at the finish end without jumping off the bottom or pulling on the lane lines or grabbing the person next to you and pulling them under. Don't do that. So freestyle, you can do anything. In fact, I have many swimmers that get tired in the 100 meter freestyle because it's so long. They will roll on their back and swim on their back for a second to catch their breath before finishing up. And that is totally legal. It's perfectly fine. The next stroke is backstroke. Backstroke is basically freestyle. And the only rule other than the freestyle rules is that you have to be on your back. You have to start on your back, you have to finish on your back, and that's a key one, because a lot of people will get down to the end of the pool and want to roll over and look to see where the wall is. We have a technique for you to be able to do that without looking for the wall. That is backstroke. Breaststroke is the one that looks like a frog. It's the most complicated to learn. It's the only one that doesn't come off its own plane. Um, 
and you move forward with it. It's just a very awkward stroke and there's a lot of timing that goes into it. So that one takes a little bit longer to learn. Give yourself some time, work on it, and you'll get it. The last stroke is butterfly. We don't swim butterfly at the Warrior Games, but it's always great to know how to do all four strokes just to break up some of the training. And every time you learn how to move in the water differently, it actually helps you move in the water better. And butterfly is the one that Michael Phelps is known for. Both arms come over the top of the water and you breathe to the front and you have that little dolphin kick action. So at the Warrior Games, we swim 50 meter freestyle, 100 meter freestyle, 50 meter backstroke and 50 meter breaststroke. Now in competitive swimming, you can have 25 yard freestyle up to 1500 meter freestyle. And the reason I switched from yards to meters is because in the USA, our short course season is 25 yards. Our long course season is like everybody else in the world, it's 50 meters. Everybody else in the world's short course season is 25 meters. We just have never switched over our short course from our yards to meters. Short course is what most high schools and college programs swim. And the year round teams, they will swim that in the winter. Long course is what the Olympics are and what is swam in our summer season. So that's why you could have a 25 yard freestyle, which is generally speaking the eight, eight year olds and unders and some of us master swimmers like to do it. Uh, and then the 1500 meter freestyle is the mile as we call it. The other strokes for the little ones can have 25 yards, but then everybody else has 50s, 100s and 200s, meters or yards. The IM is the individual medley where you swim all four strokes. It has to be in the correct order. It's back, butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, and freestyle. The relay is backstroke, breaststroke, butterfly, freestyle. Uh, and those IMs are either 100 in a short course pool, 200, or 400. There are many different reasons to swim. Maybe you want to get exercise. Maybe you want to compete. Maybe you just want to get in the water with your kids and have them have fun and you not worry about whether you can help them or you can't help yourself. Maybe you want to be able to go on a boat and go skiing and not be scared of falling in the water. Maybe you'd like to do triathlons, open water swimming, lake swimming, ocean swimming, river swimming. So there's many different reasons to learn how to swim and learn how to swim relaxed and efficiently. Definitely want to be efficient with all of this. So we want you to get up to your comfort level or whatever level you're interested in getting up to because we're here for you and we want you to swim for you for whatever your purposes are and your goals are. This pool is 25 yards long. This is considered short course. Everywhere else in the world the pool would be 25 meters. What we swim at Warrior Games is in a 50 meter pool, which is about 55 yards. So it'd be down and back in this pool, plus back out to the flags. You have your starting blocks. And some pools now have fins on the back that look like a track start that you can use. This bar right here is what you hold on to for the backstroke start. You have your lane lines, which separate all the lanes. You are not allowed to pull on them. You have the line at the bottom of the pool that goes all the way down. And at the end, you have the T, which tells you you're almost finished. Now, that black cross on the end can be a diamond, it can be a plus sign, but that helps you with your depth perception to know where the wall is. If you are in a competition, there will be a timing pad. It will still have a contrasting color on it to help you know when to finish. Those timing pads are soft. You just have to push your fingers into it to make the watch stop so you can get a correct time. Now these flags are for backstroke. They are called the backstroke flags. And in fact, if you watch the Olympics, they come down on any of the races that do not include backstroke. That would be freestyle, breaststroke, butterfly. They are up 
for backstroke and IM. The IM is an individual medley, which consists of you doing all four strokes. What you do is figure out how many arm strokes it takes to get from the flags to the wall. So you don't have to look for the wall and you won't crash into it. So let's go over some of the equipment that you're gonna use while you're training. Most pools are gonna have kickboards available for you to use. When you're using a kickboard, make sure you hold the edge of it at the top with your arms on the kickboard straight out. You don't wanna be on it, you wanna be long and lean. Not, this makes you a little bit more wobbly, this gives you a little bit more stability, and this is how you wanna swim. Long arms, long torso, long leg. If you wanna buy yourself a pair of flippers, these are great training aids because they help you swim a little bit easier so you can go longer without getting out of breath or having to take breaks. There also allows you to use your legs less than you normally do so that you can concentrate on maybe your arms or your breathing. I forgot to tell you that these are floating rubber fins. These are the ones I think are better for training purposes rather than say scuba dive fins or other things like that. They also have shorter ones. I just prefer the longer fins. There's also pull buoys. Now a pull buoy is what you use when you don't want to kick and you just want to concentrate on your pull. So you hold it between your legs. I have to cross, cross my ankles in order to hold it in. Some, some people don't have to do that. And this way you can just use your arms and concentrate on your pulling and your breathing and not worry about the kick. These are hand paddles. They come in different shapes. You have to get the right size. Be careful if you have shoulder injuries already. This will put a lot of strain on your shoulder because you now have a lot more surface area that you're pushing on. So my size is small. A lot of elite athletes will get much bigger paddles because they're trying to train a little bit harder. For beginners, I prefer the smaller ones that just fit over your hand. And you use these to pull. It gives you surface area, it helps your pull, it helps your technique, and it helps increase your strength in your arms as a training tool. Of course, you want a swim cap, especially in racing. You don't have to use it in training, especially if you have short hair. But longer hair, even though I don't necessarily like wearing these in training, it keeps the hair out of my face. It just makes it easier. Goggles. These are actually, I don't know if you can see, but these are for outdoor training or competition. They're metallicized. Indoor goggles would be clear or maybe a light color. Um, you can use these indoors. It just makes it a little bit harder sometimes to see uh, if it's dark inside. You have your bathing suit. This was SOCOM's uh, racing suit for last year. We got a cool little pattern going on. This is a racing suit because it has the knees on the female suit. Guys can wear jammers or briefs in practice. Girls can wear, you can wear this for practice. Um, I would suggest getting a larger size for practice and a smaller size for competition. Um, or you can just wear your regular suit. If you're outside, they do have two-piece training bikinis that won't fall off. And then you probably want to take a towel to dry off. And we got these nifty little things last year for Warrior Games. When you swim, there's a couple basic principles that apply to all the strokes. First of all is your body position. You need to be floating. Basically, let the water hold you up. You don't need to swim upwards, you just need to swim forward. Sink to swim. Second, your alignment. Make sure your neck and your back and your legs are all straight in alignment. We don't be, wanna be wonky all out to the side. Smaller, narrower ships are faster than big square barges. So you wanna be long and lean in the water. You wanna slice through the water. You don't wanna plow through the water. You also need to relax. So many people get tense and they're trying to power through the water and you're not gonna do that. You need to finesse the water. For instance, if you have your hand outside of a car window, holding it against the air, you kind of tense a little bit, but you're not shoving the air. You just tense and hold. Same thing with the water. When you do your strokes, you tense and hold and then you push the water back. That's what we do. We push the water back in order to go forward. However you want to move in the water, 
push the water the opposite way. Pretty simple concept. So relax, float. We gotta learn how to breathe properly. And that's in one of my other videos, we'll learn how to do the exhalations and inhalations. So that way you don't run out of breath. And then you just move forward. That's the basic principles in all four strokes. And we will be going over those in a later video, but I just wanna kinda of introduce you to the concepts today. So to wrap it up a little bit, swimming can be used for recreational purposes, exercise purposes or competitive purposes or just plain fun doing cannonballs. But in order to swim efficiently, you need to relax. You need to learn how to breathe properly and you need to let the water hold you up, sink to swim, and then just move forward by pushing the water backwards. There's so many different strokes and so many different ways to use equipment. You can break up the monotony of any kind of workout that makes it a little bit more interesting and it makes you uh, learn how to do different parts of the body at different times. So thanks for listening and I hope you come out and learn how to swim.